Hello traders, welcome to the Friday forecast and trade recap had two trades, two losses. We will take a look at them as we go. This is EU. On EU, I did not take any trades and did not have an order on at any time. What happened in the prior price action? Well, we kind of ascended into this upper liquidity area of the range and then we reversed as expected. For me, got no entry, so we got of a slowdown, a bit of a slowdown here. Then we broke the low, retrace, broke the low, continued, not enough momentum, and then broke the high, broke the low right here. Maybe you're wondering if I took this trade. I did not. For me, this just broke the high, retraced, broke the low, just one candle, printed a huge wick, continued, but then this was kind of more like a descending structure so basically i expected more of a range right here and i did not take this trade so we can move on to the next one or my forecast for the next week well i just want to see a large impulse up or a large impulse down to be honest so a large impulse down nice flag or a nice break and they retest or potentially a nice reversal to the upside a flag or a break and they retest to the upside this to me doesn't look like anything really i mean we just kind of descended and then okay we continued with a clean close and then another clean close but for me i just need to see more momentum here so on a friday i actually stopped trading at around 5 pm london time and yeah currently i don't have an order on for this continuation nor will i take it the next week i'm looking for more of a push down I need to see more momentum going down. Okay, EJ had no order on here, wasn't looking at anything, so we were stuck between the most recent high and the most recent low. Then we broke it, printed a huge wick, and after this huge wick, I'm expecting more of a range. This is the exact reason why we need to be really careful with what happens in the liquidity areas. As you can see, there was a clear liquidity area right here huge wick retrace so this is what the market makers do they push the price into the liquidity zone take a lot of people out and then possibly continue with the range or reverse the price completely to the upside that is why you don't sell on the first breakout candle you wait for the next one see the next one printed huge weakness to a downside printed a huge wick okay Aussie US dollar uh, but again the forecast for EJ I'm just looking for a large impulse up or a large impulse down so something like this or this just to move away from this range and move away heavily from the range if you're wondering if i took the flag here i did not take the flag because i saw a momentum shift in this blue candle when i see a momentum shift i'm looking for or i'm expecting a range or a reversal this would have been the entry for the flag and for me the range has not yet formed so I did not take it. Aussie US dollar, I actually took a trade right here to go short. So what I was seeing, let me explain. Basically, there was also a opportunity to buy right here, which I did not take. It was too far away from my entry. So my entry would be on the inside bar. And right here, you can see how far away would it, it would have to retrace 30 pips again pips don't matter what matters is the size so if i just bring a line like this and then compare it to the size of the rest of the move definitely would be a momentum shift if a red candle printed here and tagged me in as you can see it is good that i followed the plan it would have been a one percent loss so managed to avoid the loss then what happened also there was a, a flag here basically a flag right here and i was asleep so i wasn't even looking at this if i was awake would i take it no because it was in a larger v reversal i would have expected a range in this area so i did not take this trade right here but i did take the next one right here as we know when we get a v we expect a range and then we expect a continuation of the second v leg so exactly what happened here price continued in the second v leg got a clean close price continued even more got an okay close not really a big wick and then 
after this candle printed, I did have an order on because I woke up at around 7 a.m. So yeah, right here, I placed my order on this candle right here. I believe 12 pips stop loss, two, two pips below the candle. And even here, even after this candle, I would have had an order on if I was awake, to be honest. For me, this was high probability. Again, after seeing a V reversal and the range, I'm expecting for the price to continue moving down. Right here, I would have been tagged in if I was awake, but I got tagged in a bit later, got tagged out for a 1% loss. I would take the trade again. I did like it. For me, there was no warning sign. Um, maybe some people were concerned that this was still inside of a larger v, v. For me, we kind of moved away from it and we got an established trend. Right here, an established trend is a impulse pullback and then a impulse continuation. That is an established trend. Okay, and then we just broke the high retrace, broke the low retrace, broke the low retrace again. This is range bound. So currently this price action is stuck in a larger range. I'm waiting for a large impulse up, flag or a break and a retest. Or a large impulse down, flag or a break and a retest. That's it. AJ, pretty crappy looking pair. So basically range bound, range bound, range bound. Just very, very range bound right here. Impulse down, huge wick. That is why we look at what happens in the second candle after a breakout. As you can see here, huge wick, signals a range, so even huge wick down, huge wick up. Definitely expecting a larger range in this general area. So, was not looking for anything. In the next week, I will wait for a breakout. Be very careful of the liquidity areas below and above. We need to see price break with enough momentum to the upside or to the downside we need to see two three maybe even four consecutive candles so we need to see conviction to the upside or to a downside that's it for aj the pound very interesting pair i did have an order on and actually took a loss right here so what i was seeing prior price was pretty crap range bound then we broke up really nice break i have to say really really nice break right here saw momentum then one candle pullback continued clean close on the top for me on the pound this is a textbook high probability setup with this clean close again i did not have an order on immediately because it would have been a shift for it to tag me and i mean just draw a candle to the entry see how big it would be would it be a shift to the downside 100%. If you saw a red candle print right here, it would definitely be a huge shift. But then we had this candle. And at that point, I was happy to start looking for a trade, then another red candle. So for me, this showed me no shift to a downside. Why did I think like that? Well, because if I just take the size, not really bigger than the blue candles, I would say even smaller than most of the candles going up especially the next one is pretty small red candle so i did have a order on on the inside bar i believe 15 no 16 pip stop loss it was a 16 pip stop loss got tagged in and then got taken out for a one percent loss so took two losses minus two percent this week it happens as part of the plan win rate 20 to 30 percent it's um it's a low win rate strategy what you're gonna do but the winners far outweigh the, the losers. The winners pay for the, for the losers 10 times over. So we really don't care about the losers, but we need to follow the plan. If we, if we just take every single trade that we like, but it does not really follow, follow our plan, well, then we're going to take a huge amount of losses and then the winners won't be able to pay for the losses. But if we follow our plan, and if we only take the trades that 100% fit the plan, well, then the winners will be far bigger than the losers. Okay, so that's the most important part, follow the plan. Second most important part, losers are a part of the game. They happen with the strategy I trade. There are far more losses than wins. Okay, pound, pound, pound. So 
right here was I looking to sell. I was not because some people may say impulse down, small pullback continuation. For me, stuck in a larger V. Stuck in a larger V, anything that forms here, I'm expecting a larger range such as this one. I'm expecting something like this. So I did not have a short order uh, or in order to go short here. Then we broke the high retraced, broke the low retraced, broke the low again, got some momentum. But for the pound, I need to see large momentum. This is not large momentum. I mean, possibly if there will be a continuation next week, such as this one, I would consider it. But what I would like to see the most is for this to continue. Then a nice flag. So for this to continue, nice flag, break and a retest or to the upside possibly a V-reversal, range, push up and then a nice flag or a break and a retest to the upside. One thing I'm seeing just now, we got a V, we got a range. This may continue trending down. So this, with my current analysis, is even better to take short. So if this continues short, 100% I'm looking to sell because I just spotted a high probability setup V range push down. This is expected to continue trending to the downside. Okay, that's about it for our pound. NJ, last pair, range bound. Nothing to see here. If you're still watching, you can close it right now. It's range bound. I'm just kidding. So basically, we're going to do the forecast nonetheless. Um, range breaks the high retraces range breaks the low one candle we always look at the next candle huge wick ah, crap setup what you're gonna do so with this huge wick i'm expecting a larger wider range something like this what i'm looking for for the next week on our nj is large impulse up large impulse down it's mostly the same on the Japanese pairs. Japanese pairs are heavily range bound. So my conclusion for the trade recap and forecast had two losses, but um, dollar pairs did show me potential. Currently, all of my Japanese pairs are really sleepy, really range bound. I'm being more patient with them. Dollar pairs, I'm seeing a bit better price action. Not really a trending market, but some indication of possible potential trends especially the pound since i saw the v the range pound will be on my watch list for the beginning of the next week take care guys uh have a good trading week i will see you in the next forecast on wednesday and that's it for the video